So common questions you may be asked on your part three oral exam are to describe shielding situations for various radiation machines. So this includes linear accelerators, CTs, PET CTs, LDR, HDR, all these different types of rooms, you need to know how to shield those. And so, for example, this particular question, you may see something similar, where simply they're going to ask you to describe how you would shield the room to the right, what equations would dictate this, name major considerations, and what is the approximate shielding needed for this room. So the very first thing you would need to do, of course, is to ensure that you know that this is a CT unit and you want to shield this CT room. So how you would and the equation are very similar. So to begin, you want to find the barrier transmission factor, which we call B. So to do that, first, you need to know the permissible dose. Now, this is going to vary. It may be 0.1, and this is millisieverts per week, and this is for controlled rooms, or 0.02 millisieverts per week, and this is for an uncontrolled room or barrier. And so those are going to be used as well as the workload. Now, the workload can be slightly different depending on what you are treating or what you are shielding rather. And for the CT, you could do number of scans per week, or you could do, and how I've typically done is MA per minute per week or MA minutes per week. So not only do you need the workload, but you need D, which is the dose per scan or MA per minute or MA minute rather. So this can be obtained from the ISO curves that are pretty much given to you by the manufacturer of the CT device that you are purchasing. And finally, you want T, the occupancy factor. This is similar and exactly the same factors that we're going to use for LINAC shielding. Essentially, the number of the maximally exposed person, how long they will be exposed to that radiation. And you can look in all the shielding documents to determine what that is. They do not change. So some major, so that is ultimately what equation you're going to do, but how are you going to use this? So for each individual wall, you are going to measure B. You are then going to use an equation, which is N equals negative log B of what we just calculated. And this is essentially going to give you a number of TVLs that you are going to determine and that you're gonna to have to use. So for example, some thicknesses, specifically mainly for linear accelerators, I guess uh, potentially you could do it for this, but there are things called TVL1s and TVLEs. And those are because the first TVL that is going to be used has a lot softer of radiation that potentially could be blocking and shielding compared to the second TVL because that after one TVL, the beam becomes a little harder. That's down a little rabbit hole that we won't cover in this video, but you potentially are ultimately going to use this equation, whether it's just simply using TVLs or finding the total thickness of that particular wall. You'll do this for every single wall. So you're going to have six of these equations. And this is the meat and potatoes of shielding a CT unit or really any shielding design at all. So you want a very firm grasp of this process so that you can verbally explain this to an examiner because at some point you will be asked this basic concept in your exam at some point. So now what are some major considerations when shielding the CT unit? So the first thing is that we only need to consider secondary radiation. Based on this donut-shaped 
device, the CT, we aren't going to have any primary radiation incident on any of these walls. It's always going to be secondary radiation, which not only is really going to help us reduce the amount of shielding needed, but also if you notice a lot of the other shielding calcs also have this use factor, a uh, factor U that typically goes on the bottom. Well, we don't have that here because this is secondary radiation. That U is what percentage of the wall or the beam time is that wall going to be exposed. But because this is all secondary radiation, we do not have this U factor. So those are important considerations as well as, of course, all of these. What is the permissible dose? Is it a controlled area, non-controlled area? The workload, are you going to be doing a bunch of scans? Is there rarely going to be a scan? Are you going to be doing four DCTs? All of these are other considerations you need to really think about. And finally, what is the approximate shielding? I found it to be very useful to have a general idea of how much shielding for all of these different rooms that you need. Of course, it's going to vary specific room by room and things of that nature. But for general purposes, 1.6 millimeters of lead is going to be able to shield a CT unit. So this is a basic CT shielding design. If you have questions, comment below. I hope this has helped you studying and enjoy your day. Best of luck studying and we will see you in the next video.